Fundamental Theorem of Calculus Part 1. <clears throat> if a function f of x is continuous on the closed interval a to b, then the function capital F of x defined on a, b by capital F of x equal integral from uh, a to x, f of t dt is continuous on a, b and differentiable on the open interval a, b, and uh, f prime of x is equal to little f of x. So this gives us a formula uh, for... Um, finding the, the, the uh, antiderivative. In practice, uh, <coughs> uh, this, this uh, formula is, can be difficult to uh, evaluate. Um, um, in some cases, uh, we'll be able to uh, express uh, capital F in terms of elementary functions. Um, and uh, that's sometimes a challenge to do that, but uh, uh, it can be sometimes be done. Uh, other times it cannot be expressed in terms of elementary functions, in which case uh, um, uh, uh, usually you approximate, um, use a computer program to um, uh, approximate f of x by, by dividing the area under uh, little f into the little rectangles and uh, using uh, approximation that way. Uh, <coughs> um, example. Um, little f uh, is square root of uh, 25 minus t squared on the interval from minus 5 to 5. Uh, you may recognize this formula from uh, pre-calculus. This is uh, the semicircle radius uh, 5 centered at 0, 0. Um, and <coughs> um, the, the integral, um, capital F of x, would be the integral from minus 5 to x of the square root of 25 minus t squared dt uh, would represent the area um, under the semicircle um, between negative uh, 5 and x. Um, so that would be uh, um, <coughs> that would be uh, capital F. Um, so um, let's see if we can um, uh, sketch a graph of capital F. Um, and um, to do that it'll be helpful to take the derivatives. Uh, the first derivative is just going to be the integrand <coughs> evaluated at x. Uh, this is um, f prime of x is square root of 25 minus x squared. Um, and um, let's look at the sign. Um, this is defined between negative 5 and 5. Um, it's going to be 0 uh, at negative 5 and 5. It'll be undefined if x is um, less than negative 5 or greater than 5. And <coughs> in between negative 5 and 5, it's going to be uh, um, positive. Uh, this is the positive square root. Uh, answer will be positive. So it's going to be increasing. Capital F is going to be increasing on the interval from minus 5 to 5. <clears throat> Unlike little, little f was uh, increasing uh, from minus 5 to 0 and then decreasing. But uh, capital F, which represents the area between minus 5 and x, is, is increasing uh, on the entire uh, interval. <clears throat> the second derivative well, let's express this in terms of exponents. This is um, 25 minus x squared to the half power. So the second derivative is going to be the derivative of f prime of x. So it's going to be uh, 1 half, use the power rule, 1 half 25 minus x squared to the minus 1 half. And then use the chain rule, take the derivative of the inside. It'll be times uh, uh, minus 2x. <coughs> and the, uh, <coughs> the 2 will cancel with the 1, one half. Um, and uh, so this is going to be um, <coughs> equal to uh, minus x over square root 25 minus x squared. And um, so let's analyze the sign there. This is undefined at either 5 or negative 5. And it's going to change the sign at 0. At, uh, if x is 0, uh, you have 0 in the numerator. Uh, so the second derivative will be 0. And uh, <coughs> um, if x is positive, uh, opposite x, or minus x, is going to be negative. If x is negative, the opposite x, or ne minus x, will be positive. So it's going to be, um, <coughs> uh, the function will be uh, concave up from minus 5 to 0. That means it holds water. It will be concave down from 0 to 5. That means it spills water between 0 and 5. So that gives us an idea <coughs> of the shape of the, of the function. And it'll be helpful to plot some points also. Um, <coughs> so I made a table of values here. Um, 
And the way I got these was I just estimated by counting the, the, the uh, squares underneath the uh, curve. Uh, so a, a capital F represents the area between um, minus 5 and, and x. So uh, <coughs> there's no squares between minus 5 and 5 under the curve. So that's uh, capital F is 0. Um, uh, there's uh, most of two squares uh, uh, between minus 5 and minus 4. There's uh, the majority of, of, of two squares. It's actually a, it's not quite the full square for each of these, um, but um, so maybe a little less than two, but I estimate it to be about two. Um, uh, between minus five and negative three, we have uh, three full squares, and then we have parts of other squares. Uh, I estimate that to be about five, um, and so forth. Um, and then we can uh, plot the points and uh, sketch the graph. and. Uh, so you can see it, <coughs> this kind of verifies what we um, found out with the derivatives. Uh, it's increasing on the entire interval. Uh, it's concave up or holds water between minus 5 and, and 0, and it's concave down or spills water between 0 and 5. Okay, um, okay so uh, <coughs> the, uh, so this, um, it, when you get to calculus, uh, uh, next week we'll get into some um, procedures for um, finding, um, uh, expressing the, the antiderivative in terms of um, elementary f um, functions, um, and uh, you'll get we'll we'll start that uh, in, in, a, in a couple in next week or so. But um, the um, next semester, if you take uh, calculus two next semester, you'll get into some more. Um, uh, techniques for finding, actually finding um, formulas uh, <coughs> for antiderivatives in terms of um, uh, elementary functions. Um, so um, anyway, um <coughs> so this one is, is it will be a bit of a challenge to find, but um, it can be shown next semester that um, uh, the antiderivative for uh, uh, square root 25 minus x squared is uh, x over 2 square root 25 minus x squared plus 25 over 2 sine inverse of x over 5 plus 25 pi over 4. Um, and as an exercise, um, let, let's, um, you can verify that f of, f of uh, negative 5 is 0, uh, f of 0 is the area of a quarter circle, f of 5 is the area of a semicircle, and so forth. Um, I'll leave some of these parts to you, but I'll, um, I'll go over parts uh, c and d. Um, <coughs> so, um, Uh, so part C, um, what f of um, five? Um, so f of, uh, part C, uh, f of x is um, x over two square root of twenty-five minus x squared plus twenty-five over two sine inverse x over five uh, plus <coughs> twenty-five pi over four. <coughs> so f of 5 be 5 over 2 square root 25 minus 5 squared plus 25 over 2 sine inverse of 5 over 5 plus 25 pi over 4. Um, <coughs> so um, 25 minus 5 squared is, is 0. Um, uh, sine inverse of uh, 5 over 5, that's sine inverse of 5, so the angle who's, the uh, angle from the restricted domain whose sine is, well, is 1, 5 over 5 is 1, would be pi over 2. So this is going to be 25 uh, over 2 times uh, pi over 2 plus 25 pi over 4 uh, <coughs> will be 25 pi over 4 plus 25 pi over 4. Uh, 50 pi over 4 um, <coughs> it reduces 25 pi over 2 so this is 1 half pi times 5 squared uh, so it's uh, every, and the, the formula um, <coughs> to our area uh, semicircle 1 half pi r squared the, the full circle has area pi r squared semicircle 1 half pi r squared so this uh, um, uh, verifies that that um, um, Function gives us what we would expect it to give, which is the area of a, of a semicircle. Um, now, uh, 
part D, uh, we want to verify that uh, f prime of x is equal to the square root of uh, 25 minus x squared. So, um, so we can use the, the product rule here. Um, this is going to be x over 2 times the derivative of 25 square root of 25 minus x squared. It's 1 half uh, 25 minus x squared to so minus 1 half um, <coughs> times the derivative of the inside, which would be minus 2x. And then um, we have to do um, uh, derivative of x over 2, which would be uh, uh, 1 half again, times um, uh, times the second factor. So it's going to be 1 half square root 25 minus x squared. Um, and then uh, the next term. We're going to the next term. So this is uh, uh, plus 25 over 2. Uh, the derivative of sine inverse would be 1 over square root 1 minus x over 5 squared. And then we want to we'll take the derivative of the inside, use the chain rule again, so it's will be 1 fifth times 1 fifth. Um, and the derivative of the, the last term is, is 0, so it would be plus 0. This is a constant derivative of 0. Okay, so. Um, <coughs> uh, we can cancel one of the twos here, um, and um, we're going to have a minus x squared um, over 2 square root 25 minus x squared um, plus um, 1 half square root 25 minus x squared. Uh, and. Um, Uh, plus, um, and we can we distribute this 5 here. If you take the 5 inside the square root, it becomes 25. Uh, so we're going to have um, 25 over 2 square root 25 minus x squared. Okay, so um, we have um, two of these fract these two fractions, uh, the first and the third terms, have the same denominator. So we can combine those, write those as one fraction. 25 minus x squared over uh, 2 square root 25 minus x squared plus 1 half square root 25 minus x squared. Uh, and um, <coughs> I'll rewrite this as uh, uh, 'll re write this as uh, um, this numerator here is uh, 25 minus x squared uh, square root of that squared because um, <coughs> uh, x is between minus 5 and 5 we're taking the positive square root um, so um, Oh, you don't have to worry about having uh, uh, the negative square root in here. Uh, okay, so um, the denominator will cancel with one of the um, factors of the numerator. So that, um, so then we're going to have uh, we'll be left with one half square root twenty five minus x squared plus one half square root twenty five minus x squared. So add the two fractions, it's 2 over 2 square root of 25 minus x squared. 2 over 2 is 1, so this is equal square root 25 minus x squared. So, um, so that verifies that um, <coughs> this, um, this function um, is in fact, um, this function here is in fact uh, uh, an antiderivative for, um, uh, for our original function. Uh, because again, this is equal to uh, s of x here, the little s of x. Um, <coughs> okay, so uh, okay, another example. Um, <coughs> um, this one, this example here is, is uh, you'll see in statistics. This is the bell curve. Um, uh, capital F is equal to the integral from 0 to x of uh, 1 over square root of 2 pi uh, e to the minus t squared over 2 dt on uh, interval from 0 to 4. Uh, 
this this integral is actually defined. This function is actually defined on the integral from minus infinity to infinity, but it's it's usually evaluated on um, uh, um, finite intervals, and um, uh, and the, the the area under the curve corresponds to a probability. So the area under the entire curve from minus infinity to infinity is is, is one, um, and uh, so the. Uh, so if you have a, a portion of the of the of the curve area under a portion of the curve, you'll have a number between zero and one, and that um, corresponds to the probability of an event happening uh, during that uh, uh, for those um, values of x. Um, and um, so um, anyway, this this um, this particular um, uh, integral. This particular integral cannot be expressed in in in, uh, in terms of elementary functions. Um, so what is done is uh, computers are used to uh, approximate the area, and um, they they use um, little rectangles or or some maybe other shapes underneath the curve, um, and take the limit as the number of of rectangles or or shapes uh, uh, goes to infinity. Um, but oh, they, they don't actually go all the way to infinity. They may uh, do uh, maybe a, a thousand or so um, <coughs> uh, to, to to get an estimate for the for the area uh, under the curve. Um, so uh, anyway, that's that's another um, use of um, uh, the definite integral. Um, uh, uh, the first fundamental theorem of calculus um, and uh, Another example would be the Fresnel functions that were originally applied to diffraction of light and have recently been uh, applied to uh, design of highways and roller coasters. Uh, again, these cannot be expressed in closed form using elementary functions. Um, so they're expressed in they can be expressed in terms of uh, integrals um, uh, and again using the first fundamental theorem of calculus uh, S of X. Uh, you have two functions, s of x and c of x. s of x is the integral from 0 to x of sine t squared dt. Uh, c of x is the integral from 0 to x of cosine t squared dt. And they can also be um, expressed as an infinite sum or an infinite series. Uh, and um, we've worked a little bit with uh, summations in this course, and you'll see more of that um, uh, if you take calculus 2 next semester. Um, they, they also have a, a can be expressed in terms of a, uh, infinite series here, um, and uh, uh, but anyway, the, the the first fundamental theorem does tell us that these these functions exist, even though if we even if we can't express them in terms of elementary functions. Um, <coughs> okay, so uh, here's uh, another example. Um, Find the derivative with respect to x of uh, the integral from one to x cubed uh, sine t dt. So again, we can apply the the, the first fundamental theorem of calculus. Uh, uh, the um, derivative of the integral is just going to be the integrand. Uh, in this case, in, uh, in our upper limit instead of x is going to be x cubed. So this is going to be a sine of uh, um, x, x cubed, and then. Um, <coughs> um, uh, because uh, we have an x cubed here instead of an x, we have to take the derivative of the, uh, use the chain rule, take the derivative of x cubed, uh, times it by the derivative of x cubed. Uh, so this is going to be um, 3x squared sine of uh, x cubed. Uh, <coughs> uh, I usually like to put the, um, uh, the algebraic, and uh, we have an algebraic uh, expression times the trig function, I usually like to um, take put the algebraic expression in, in front because uh, otherwise it, um, it looks it's a little bit ambiguous. Uh, one might think that uh, <coughs> one is taking the sign of the, that entire product, uh, but uh, uh, the sine of x cubed times three uh, x squared. So it's uh, less, I think it's less amb ambiguous. Uh, it's a little bit clearer if you put the algebraic uh, portion in front. <coughs> um, Okay, so I'll go over uh, a proof of uh, fundamental theorem of calculus uh, part one. Um, so um, we define uh, capital F 
to be the integral from a to x of uh, f of t dt. Uh, I want to show that uh, f prime of x is equal to uh, little f of x. Um, so um, by definition, um, uh, f prime of x is equal to the limit of h, h goes to 0 of uh, capital F of x plus h minus f of x all over h. That's the difference quotient. Uh, and then, um, <coughs> uh, so we can write f of x plus h as the integral from a to x plus h of uh, f of t dt. And f of x is the integral from a to x of f of t dt. Uh, and um, the, the um, if we switch the limits of integration, if we reverse the limits of integration, it'll change the sign. So we can, um, instead of going from a to x, we'll go from x to a for the, the second term. We'll go from x to a and make it with a plus sign. And then um, <coughs> uh, we can combine those uh, into one interval. So um, e e um, I th I'm going to write this, A is actually um, um, probably um, bigger than uh, x plus h, uh, A is over here somewhere, but um, I think in terms of uh, understanding, uh, in terms of the way the formulas work, it's a, it works the same as if A were, were between x and x plus h. Uh, so if, if you want to add these two components, x to A and the component to x, x, A plus x plus h, um, then the, the result is the um, the interval from uh, x to x plus h. So we can combine those two um, into one integral. And then um, we can apply the, the intermediate value theorem. So this is, um, uh, this is just the um, average value of the function over that interval. Uh, and so there's, uh, that's equal to um, f of c for some, um, uh, for some c inside that interval. And, um, and uh, <coughs> then we take the limit as h goes to zero. Well, as h goes to zero, um, um, c is going to go to x. Oh, th actually, this is the interval x plus h. Uh, this is h here, but it's the integral from c and the interval from x to x plus h. And um, uh, so this is uh, so take the limit as h goes to zero of f and c. That's equal to f of x because f is continuous and because um, um, uh, uh, c goes to x as um, h goes to zero. Okay, because uh, as as h goes to zero, um, uh, these two points are getting closer and closer to get together. So c is going to get closer and closer to uh, to x. Um, and uh, so that concludes this presentation. <coughs>